So moving on to the next slide then, um, one of the other benefits or the third benefit of intermittent fasting is that it improves insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Now it's very important for me to say that if you have type 2 diabetes then it's important that you only fast after you've got medical uh, clearance from a healthcare practitioner uh, so you don't want to be fasting without medical guidance um, but if you have pre-diabetes or you have insulin resistance or you have uh, a risk for insulin resistance or, or a greater heart heart disease risk, then it's very beneficial for you to do intermittent fasting because it reduces the circulating glucose. This is the blood glucose that's going around in all of the blood vessels around the body. Um, now, if you can reduce the amount of uh, blood glucose, then you're going to reduce this process called oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress is uh, a, a, a very complicated biochemical process, but I've tried to simplify it with this picture. Now, oxidative stress is what turns your fruit brown and horrible your fruit and vegetables brown and horrible and it's also the same process that happens in our cells now what happens with a normal cell is that it's attacked by free radicals okay these free radicals start to damage the cell membrane and then they infiltrate inside the cell and they start to attack the organelles that are contained within the cell. Now if they attack, they attack the nucleus which contains the genetic instructions for the cell to divide then you're going, you're going to actually get um, uh, alterations in the way that that cell functions. It may become dysfunctional, uh, dysfunctional and increase your risk of serious uh, chronic diseases. So by fasting you're actually enabling this antioxidant process to, to happen okay you have uh, a lowering of oxidative stress and increase in antioxidant capabilities uh, of the cell and you're going to limit uh, long-term damage right so um, moving on you also have a reduction in inflammatory cells as well now in normal times, we always have inflammatory cells circulating in different parts of our body and, and they're involved in uh, healing and repair and growth of new cells. So having inflammation in the body is good. It's when you have this constant low-grade inflammation which is chronically there and starts to attack the tissues instead of repair them. And essentially what, in, what studies have shown is that intermittent fasting can reduce what we call pro-inflammatory cells or cytokines. Now cytokines are proteins and I've abbreviated one here, interleukin-6, uh, which are involved in promoting inflammation within different tissues of the body, and also another um, uh, inflammatory marker called C-reactive protein. Now both of these, along with many of the other uh, inflammatory cytokines, can actually directly injure our blood vessels. And uh, similarly, homocysteine is another molecule which can injure our blood vessels. Uh, and essentially what we can see in the image here are three different types of, of blood vessels. We can see a coronary artery, and we can see that there's an inflama inflammatory cascade occurring within the vessel, which is causing it to narrow. And again, this is happening or in part being promoted by these, by these molecules here. Uh, and we can also see a, a microvessel of the kidney, um, which is also being affected. Its, its membrane is being broken down by inflammatory cells. And similarly in the retina, the microvessels of the eye, we can see the similar process happening. So it's not just the heart, it's the blood vessels of other organ systems in the body that can be affected by inflammation when it when it goes out of control. Now fasting, intermittent fasting can help reduce these so it prevents blood vessel damage. Um, Relatedly, it also, it's also been shown to reduce heart disease risk as well. And, and one of the ways in which intermittent fasting helps there is that it reduces blood pressure, um, it reduces cholesterol, and that's all types of cholesterol. So your total cholesterol, your low density lipoprotein, which is the bad cholesterol, uh, and your triglycerides as well. Uh, we've already seen that it reduces body fat, body fat percentage, your glucose levels, uh, and inflammatory markers as well. So all of these are as a result of intermittent fasting fasting so that's a lifestyle change that can help with with risk factor control there and that then improves your microvessel or your small blood vessel function and also your large blood vessel function throughout the body so it limits the the damage that these risk factors could cause to your small and large blood vessels and that's one of the benefits of intermittent fasting so the sixth is 
promoting autophagy. So we talked about it earlier in the video, this self-eating of cells, uh, and basically our cells do become old and they're regenerating daily on a day-to-day -day basis. When they become old, they also become dysfunctional and they're likely to cause errors in the way that the, the tissue, the organ will actually function, and that can lead to illnesses and, and long-term diseases. So autophagy is a process that's being more, more studied in the scientific uh, area now. So there's more research that's being released about the various triggers or various factors that we can uh, use to try and promote this autophagy process. Now it's an automatic process and the cells are broken down, they're recycled, we get uh, cell repair and growth of new cells. Um, now importantly there are proteins that can be toxic that are released inside the cells. Okay. Now in the brain that those toxic cells can contribute to the development of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease as well. Now intermittent fasting has been shown to reduce some of these toxic proteins. Okay. And by reducing these proteins you're going to reduce uh, hopefully your risk of developing these um, uh, uh, d d d these conditions. Um, there is also some evidence to show that um, autophagy is involved in, in kind of preventing cancer as well. So by regulating uh, cell renewal, you can prevent uncontrolled cell growth and reduce your risk of cancer. But again, research in that area is still uh, in its infancy and needs to continue to um, so that we can understand more about what's going on. Um, and importantly, then fasting, intermittent fasting is an important trigger. Like exercise, like other things that we can do in our, in our life, in our lifestyle, it's an important trigger of actually um, Im improving uh, this autophagy process. So moving forward, it also lowers cancer risk as well. And as I said, the research here is very experimental. Most of the studies that have been done have been done in animals, uh, and they show reduced risk of lymphomas, breast and uh, prostate cancer as well. Okay, so, but it is all experimental uh, at the present time. So in terms of the types of intermittent fasting that you can actually do, um, there are uh, three main methods that are currently uh, advised in terms of intermittent fasting. So the first is the 16 to 8 method, and this is very common uh, in, with, in terms of the Islamic fasting for the month of Ramadan. Um, so you fast for 16 hours, and then you have a period of eight hours where you can eat. Um, you've got the 24 hour fast, which is a very tough one. Probably you've got to be psychologically motivated to do that one. You fast for 24 hours, so you can do it from dinner to dinner, lunch to lunch. You do it on one to two days per week, and again, that causes quite significant calorie restriction. Um, and then you've got the five to two diet as well, which where you restrict your calories to 500 kilocalories on two non-consecutive days per week. Um, but on the other days, you can eat normally. So generally people tend to choose Monday and a Thursday where they restrict their calories to 500 um, and then they eat normally on, on all of the other days. But these are the ones that are, are available at the moment. There are other, there may be other intermittent fasting approaches or variations of these uh, that one might be able to do. And as more research comes out, of course, there'll be more approaches that one can use in, um, it, it, with, in terms of intermittent fasting. So in summary, we know from today's presentation that fasting has numerous health benefits. So we've talked about a few of them and just acknowledging that when, when we eat, there's a number of different processes that are happening inside the body, a number of different uh, digestive processes that require energy, that require blood flow. Uh, and you give your body a chance to rest, to heal, to recover. Um, it's a very effective weight loss tool, as we've seen, particularly the visceral fat around the abdomen. Um, there are multiple approaches, but the 16 to 8 is the most achievable uh, and, and the simplest as well. So that's everything for today's video. I'd like to thank you very much for your time and I hope to join, I hope you can join me again very soon. Thank you.